Hello and welcome to the Luxury Lounge. That's right, every Thursday we head in the lounge, we shut the door, and we air our grievances with the world. And there's no grievance that's too big or too small or too frivolous. It is your grievance. That means it is a worthwhile grievance. And if you want to send in your complaint, send it to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. That's jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. If you're listening right now, I'm going to be in Miami over Thanksgiving weekend. Come carve the turkey with your dear old Uncle J Train. Going to be in Virginia Beach. Going to be in... Oklahoma City. I was there before. The Saturday shows got canceled because of the power going out, which is crazy. So I'm coming back. Uh, yeehaw. Um, very excited. First time on the J Train podcast. First time in the mm. lounge. Mm. Neil Brennan, thank you for coming mm. on. Mm. Jared. Welcome to the lounge. Sweetheart, thank yes. you for having me. Are you doing the Miami improv? Yeah. Did they, is it, it, they moved, right? It's like in a mall towards the airport. Calling it Miami is is charitable. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. It's nice. to, to, to put it mildly, well, they yeah. used to have the one where they there was like a screen door in the middle of the stage. Like the entrance to the stage was like a, it was like a door out of like out of like Boys in the Hood. It was really? like it was like a metal door was like the okay. way, and it was in the middle of the stage. And so then the green room appear? was right there. Yeah, like the you're green room on a is couch, right there. You stand up and you're on stage, but you got to go through like, uh, a, like a barn door. No, like a 1995. Who the fuck's at my door? Door. Okay. That's all I can tell you. Okay. Like heavy metal, like barricaded almost. Really? Yeah. I think it's a different spot. Now. It's, it's nice. Too. Like it's this like, was not that nice. Yeah. It was also it was hard. I bombed. What I'm trying to say, I had a tough weekend. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm happy to Thanks, have you in the lounge, Thanks. man. Thanks everyone, you got a Netflix special out. Everyone needs to go watch it. Hilarious. It's called Blocks. It's on Netflix right now. Um, explain the special to people that, you know, I like that you do. You always do different. I do a, I, le- I don't want to just do a glib press conference like most stand-up specials. Mm. Like, look here. <laughs> I called y'all here right. to get some things off my chest. So I wanted to make it like uh I don't just a little more something like we can do more than just stand and talk. It is interesting. You know, I I say this about podcasts, like every comedian's like, I want my own show. Yeah. And then they start a podcast where you can literally do any show you want, what everybody else and they do Rogan. Yeah. (laughs) And you go, wait a minute. What what they want to say is I want to be as popular as Rogan. Right. It's not, (laughs) it's not a reason. There's no creativity. Ten reasons that you'll never, (laughs) you can't understand. Yeah. You're not getting cast on news radio. I mean, then, you need a time machine. I mean, right. like, yeah. So, so I tr- with stand-up specials, I take the same approach, which is like, I'm not the best. I'm not gonna out Dave, Dave, or out Rock, Rock, mm. or out like I like that thing, or bur- out Burr, Burr, whatever. Like right. those guys do that really well. Mm-hmm. So I do that ish, and then another thing with it. Yeah, you get. You're like, I got an hour of time. Yeah. Let me let me let me play with the medium. Like yes. you know, like I I like you know, I like to move on stage. Like I like I like every joke. I watched one comic or I, Kevin James special is like my favorite special, the sweat the small stuff. He has you a know what's funny? I don't think I've ever seen it, but I've had you I had a girlfriend jo- that like loved it. It's my I've watched it seven thousand times. Yeah. I mean, it's on YouTube. It's funny when someone tells you their favorite comedian and you go, Yep, that makes sense. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> I remember when Christine Pavitsky told me that uh or Chris, it, it, Christina told me that um, her favorite comedian was Roseanne. I was like, mm. of course it is. I, it never occurred to me, but like once you hear it, you're like, yeah, of course you love fucking Kevin James. Right. Like, and it's I, the same. I, it's a, the aura. I, when I, yeah. I have people say it to me after the show, you know, I like, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And what I liked about his is like, and like you said, it's like, I'm never going to do that, but I, you know, do this person. Yeah. But I like, and I'm, when I like, when I'm preparing a bit, I'm like, what's the move? Like, I want to have a move that goes with it because. Kevin, J- I liked watching that. I was like, I well, want to watch that. Well, that's funny because at like the cellar, it's a lot of these New York stages are not built can't for do it. movement. It's, it, well, it makes that that helps me because now I have to do the thing I'm least comfortable with is talking. not moving, talking. Yeah, and you so, can move a little bit, but you can't really like like the VU is the best place for it. Yeah, the Village Underground, yeah. is one of their rooms. That's like where I'm most comfortable. Yeah, of course. So, do you try to back? backlog back time your bits to a move i did i tried that 
I was trying a bit for like seven years, uh -huh. never worked, where I, I thought it was just so funny of running into someone in the street and doing this with yeah. them. I just thought that was funny. And yeah. I tried to do a bit about running into someone. And I'm, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see. But like, just like that moment where you make eye contact yeah. with someone and you can't, you do that walk dance with yeah, them yeah, yeah. where you can't get, and I could never make a bit out of it. Like, cause, so I couldn't go backwards. I could always it's go. One of the, that feels like a very, that feels like an Ellen bit. Really? I don't even know if she did it, but it's just, I can see her doing right. it. You worked on Ellen's uh, yeah, special. Yeah, I worked on her special, yeah. That was a fun, I, th I'll i give you this note that I gave her, whatever. Yeah. I'm fucking giving notes uh, to Ellen. I just said before her final taping, you're never going to do these jokes again, ever. Mm. So just l live it up. Have fun with it. Like, if you're going to do an act out, right. overdo it. She did a joke about... Uh, when you try on shoes, you do a walk. You've never, you never funny do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and she like double, it was double the act out just cause That's I was a, like, Hey, do right. your like, go for it. Yeah. You know? I have a bit about wearing, uh, that like I, everyone has body issues because, uh, when I look at myself in the mirror while wearing a shirt, I stand in a way I've never stood before. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm like, I what you're what, saying shoulders back I go like this right like, <laughs> to yeah. flatten out my stomach yeah and it's oh, like, right, right, right. <laughs> to yeah. make the shirt fit better. yes but yeah. it, I think about that I was like trying to do like what more what other moves do I do in the mirror and you get stuck yeah you're like I want to keep doing I would like in my mind I'm like I want to do an hour of moves <laughs> like yeah <laughs> right? I mean I don't think there's anything wrong with that I think like I worked on the daily show when Trevor started like I he asked me to come and just kind of consult and I told the writers, I was like, get him to an act out. Mm. He's very good at voices. And the audience loses their mind. Right, right, right. It's like he's got a lot of women in the crowd. It just is cute as hell. Mm -hmm. And like, let let him. That's He's great at it. Yeah. Just let him go. Let the... Let the let the horse run around the yard. Put him in his in his yeah, sweet let the spot. pony run around the paddock. <laughs> All right, let's go to the ad first before we get anything. Uh, we're sponsored, Manscaped. Woo! It's the time of year. Great gift. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Their performance package has it all. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin-safe technology. You didn't expect your shaver to have proprietary skin safe technology but it does and it protects your delicate parts and holes both are waterproof so you can shave in the shower very classy don't forget to apply their aluminum free ultra premium deodorant for that cologne quality scent on the go manscaped is even throwing in two free gifts the manscaped boxers and the shed travel bag i love the travel bag it's great the platinum package 4.0 covers all your bases from head to toe get 20 20 20 percent off and free shipping with code jtrain at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with the code jtrain at manscaped.com be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from manscaped your balls will thank you and if you're out there and you got a boyfriend what a great gift fun gift gets you talking about the man region a little sexy let's go to my complaint hit the music jared he has some problems Jared, he's got some issues to do. Get off his chest right now. Jared has a lot of issues. Jared has a I know my first issue complaint with a yeah. lot <laughs> of things that we can discuss. Can you relate to the problem now Neil I have a feeling you're gonna like agree with this complaint or like this enjoy this complaint can I make can I go first oh if you want to go first we, 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 I, we well have, I just want to say we can all edit our music just that's right a, that's just edit our <laughs> edit our work right I, just shorten it whatever you it's think killing it's killing your own it's baby fun. it's yeah it's no it, it's it's yeah no I know I know that's what that's what the intention was yeah it's too long. It's too long. You know it's too long. Why frustrate people that are on your side? Right. Well, I, the, the 15 second button exists. You know, I, I like the. Honestly, the music is more for you than them at this point. They know the song. I got to tell you. And well, yeah, you know my feelings. About yeah, it. You're out. Too long. Well, 
Just kind of, we can. Do all you want to do your complaint thing. first? No. Okay, I'll do mine. I just stayed at the Four Seasons. Congratulations. Which one? Boston. Okay. The old one. They have a new one. This is the one on Boylston. My problem is I want to talk about it. I, it is the best hotel there is. I, 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 the way that they, particular hotel, just or the, the Four, four Seasons, seasons yeah. experience is just. I found myself thinking over and over again throughout the stay. How much you hate poor people? Right. <laughs> it's exactly. I was like, get these losers Animals. out of my face. Yeah. I was. I literally said to myself, I sounded like an old Jewish woman. I just kept going. There's nothing like a Four Seasons. And That's I so wanted funny. to say it to people, you can't. You can't go around. You can't even tell people you stay there. You gotta, Everyone, well, you gotta, and also when you're there, you gotta act like you've been there before. You can't right. be like, oh man, right. look at the moldings, honey. Right. They have a snack closet called the vault. And it's literally, your key gets you to it. I'm famously, as these people who listen to this podcast know, I'm a nighttime eater. I saw that thing and I was like, it's over for me. What they have in it? Candy, Because I've never, I've stayed at, I didn't know about it. I think maybe it's just this Boston one has it. Every floor, you get your key, you go in there. They had a soda machine that made you flavored soda like that. Fresh. Fresh flavored LaCroix versions of soda. And I'm sitting there, and you're right. You have to act like, oh, who cares about that? I walked by it. I was like, I was taking pictures of it. Like, And I, again, so it's like this this thing of like. And you were asking other people. customers to take your yeah, picture take a picture of me with like the hey can you believe it right ah they're, they're like yeah i yeah, like, hey, i own man, instagram rich. i exactly. can believe it i'm very rich yeah. <laughs> yeah right like everyone there yeah I, and it's the thing where it's like i want to tell everyone i can't tell anyone i want to say like how much i love a four season and it's like and they do a better job than any other hotel in a, as a chain they do it like and they're a privately owned company i think yeah you there's the here's the downside of four seasons you can't get points for it. Nothing. There's no, they're not in any system. You're right. The Ritz is in the Marriott, Marriott. And there's another good one that's in, and St. Regis is in Marriott. And then that's the thing you go, this is special. This is amazing. I can't unsee what I've seen. I can't tell, you know, it's the flying private versus commercial. Right. You have now experienced it. Everything will be compared to it. I can't even go to people who will be like, there's nothing like a Four Seasons because now you sound like a dick, but it's right. one of those things. Really, you just sound very Jewish. Right. Like ex- right. More Ju- <laughs> very, extremely Jewish. Yeah. And it's like, I want to just go to Boca for like a weekend so <laughs> I can talk about it with other people. Yeah. Yeah. That's my complaint. Um, well, in Boca, they'll bring it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you don't even need to. <laughs> I don't even know. You'll be like, you'll be like, am I? They'll, you'll overhear them like, nothing like a Four Seasons. And um, I'll run over to their golf yeah. cart to, the, to agree with them. <laughs> right. Um, turn your miracle ear up. Uh, <laughs> the My complaint. Oh, hold on. Hit the music. If you hated the first song. It's the guest's turn to complain. They're You're, ready again. to jump in. <laughs> I. I was saying they've got lots of problems too. It ain't all about Jared. Let's it's hear about their you. It's you're wasting the their day. time. Let's it's kind it's of like when you're on when you're on a road trip with a girl or, and you're like Jared you're doing a bit she doesn't like, right? And you keep doing it, keep hitting you, that drum, yeah, and you keep doing it. Do you know you're like you. I may leave. <laughs> If this doesn't stop. Complaint. You know, it's funny. There's two people in the history of this show who have hated the music. Me and? You, my dad. Great. <laughs> I get that it. That is the two people. I get it. Um, what do you got? Uh, my complaint? It's not really... I don't even know how to, like... I have a hotel complaint I want to get into. Okay. Uh, but the... I just had a Fitbit. I there's it, I I had a Fitbit break for no reason and then a second one break for no reason. Okay. And it feels like the first one broke after 11 months it just like shorted. Done. And then this one just like the other day just like the f- the face popped out and you could see the wiring and shit. And I it's there doesn't seem to be I didn't have any idea what to do. There's no, like no fucking, there's no Fitbit repair play. There's no <laughs> Apple. There's no, it's yeah, one I don't of these even things know where, where it's like, where it. do I, I don't know where to go. I couldn't really remember where I bought it. And then I realized I bought it on Amazon. So it's like, I, 
you're the done. The, who are you going to call it? Amazon. And I will say this for Amazon: an incredible return policy within 30 days. They will also just give you the thing. That's what I'm saying. It's right. like you kind of go like, "All right, Bezos, whatever you need to do, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you knock yourself out." Also, with the Fitbit, there's no, there's no other like with a video game, you blow in the cartridge. At least that's an option that you feel yeah. some control. Right. The Fitbit, you're like, I have no control over this. What's I, there's do no. What do I go- need? Yeah, I need like uh, I need uh, I need a lab or right. something. Like I don't know. Do you go to like the you broke it you fi- whatever you break we fix or whatever right, the, fuck the place called? where they fix yeah. an iPhone. I maybe cover. could. What do you want right now? It. What do you, you got? I a new one. got a new one. You go Fitbit, not Apple Watch. Apple Watch I had for like a day, and they you have to charge them every kind of every day. And right. This you only have to charge like every five days. Because there's other, th- there's not as much going on. on I it. don't know why. I don't know why. It's just way. It's just significantly better. Really, for what? my lifestyle. <laughs> it's just way better. See, that's the thing. Like I fit into Apple's thing so much that I feel controlled by Apple. Like yeah, I, I hear you. I, I like I I have the Apple Watch. I'm like. Yeah. Fits me. I have the, the Apple phone, the iPhone, the AirPods. Like, I'm like, I am literally. You're what the, yeah, you're the, you're in the, yeah, but I don't, I, that I'm not mad about because like, mm. I don't know, they make good shit. They do. Um, Apparently it's not as good as PC stuff, but it's cuter. But it's, you know, I, but I understand the powerlessness of yeah. how you feel because I'm like, if Apple, I've said this before, if Apple took a, min- a minute off the clock every day. Uh, that would be the time for me. You know, if if they oh, change, right. yeah, if yeah, yeah. Apple took one minute off of every day, I, night would become day, day would become night, and I'd be like, I guess this is how I live now. This is where we are. This is where we are. Yeah, that's the, uh, I realize PC is like the ugly person with the good personality. <laughs> and Apple's like, kind of not, it's like a decent Personality, but like really cute. Really cute. You can't like take your eyes really off. Really nice, like skin and hair and stuff. <laughs> Let's go to the complaints. You ready? Let's go. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Here with Neil Brennan at Neil Brennan, neilbrennan.com for tour dates, blocks. That's a special on Netflix right now. Go watch Luxury Lounge selfie videos during skincare treatment. Jared, Feather Feather, my complaint is about people who take selfie videos while actively getting skincare treatments, primarily facials. These have been on TikTok and Instagram for a while now, and I understand they are often used as promotions, but I'm now seeing amateur selfie videos appear on my Instagram stories, created by normal non-influencer people that I follow. I am not interested in a play-by-play of your trip to the local spa or the weird combination of your tense shoulders and arms while you hold your phone up over your face paired with a trying to appear relaxed face i'm sure they're worried about dropping the phone on their face the whole time why not be present and enjoy the relaxation no one asked for these videos sincerely keep your spa day to yourself what do you think i think the the thing of a lot of people have been asking me (laughs) about my beauty routine my skin regime uh by the way it's skin regimen regime is a uh political (laughs) uh uh block uh, blocks on Netflix, <laughs> and um, and uh, that's one of those things where like a lot of people have been asking me. Either what that means is one person asked one you, person. or no people asked you. Right, you um, created a world where you are somehow looked up to. Well, a lot of people have been asking. It's the Trump thing of like a lot of people are saying. Right, <laughs> a lot of people are asking me about my skin, and. Uh, the thing of a lot of people have been asking, here's the number one beauty tip. Mm. And I tell all my listeners, if I don't <laughs> have a hot mom. There, there is no <laughs> better no s- beauty tip right. than having a hot mom. That there's, takes care of 90% of your problems. There's no, s- you no, can fu- there's I no have moisturizer. another observation. Women who wear, uh, who walk around with a parasol, that's the little uh, umbrella they Do walk they? around with. Yeah, in LA okay. especially, yeah. Because they're protecting their skin. What I'm saying is get a little tan because you you look very pale. See, and, we, that's and an they're LA. covered in SPF and they've got a parasol. And it's like, and they're like, well, when I get older, when you get older, no one's gonna care. No, one no one's to gonna say, "Hey, did he? Did I tell you who I'm fucking? That old ghoul." <laughs> yeah. 
It's like you and I saving our athleticism for our 70s. Right. Like it, saving my knees. Yeah, like for that blow basketball. Them out. No, go ahead, go get that tear that ACL already. It's also if you have a parasol. Uh-huh. Let that me make is sure the, it's a parasol. I think it's either parasol to, or camisole. To me, you, if you're holding an umbrella and it's not raining out, that is the that is the monocle of accessories for women. You're absolutely like right. Like you are trying to tell the world I am a wealthy well-to-do knowing better than you person it isn't even about the sun i don't even believe that um it's i mean look everything's signaling yeah but um but but it's about i mean in la you don't have to be rich they act like you know um like that there it's a camisole i believe it's a camisole i believe what i like about this email is they're capturing something that's going on a lot right now where no one feels bad about... Yeah, we're going to go camisole. I it's don't a camisole? It. Yeah. No one feels bad about hacking other people's stuff. Like, this person that isn't an influencer is, like, okay with copying an influencer because it's a trend. Like, I, I don't uh, like... It, again, that we've all gone you f- need to do is moist... It's just fucking... I, you know what the <laughs> my beauty tips are? People go, you have... People, girls actually will say you have really good skin. What do you put on it? Uh, fucking coconut oil right. or almond oil. There's no, like... And then I scrub it. Then I soak my face right. in lemon for three minutes. <laughs> it's gotta be three. Just, I also... You know why I look young? Because I looked young... I looked... When I was 30, I looked... 19. Okay. You've when always I always looked young. I've always looked young. Yeah. I was a late, I didn't start puberty till like fucking way late. Like, just, it's all, I'm just behind. Right. I get, you, nothing enrages a woman more than hearing a male skincare routine. Right. Like, because I get asked. I get, yeah. oh, you have great. And I go, and I even play it up. I go, yeah, when I take a shower, the shampoo comes down on my face and mm-hmm. I scrub it a little bit mm-hmm. and then I'm gone and I'm done. And they like yeah. they want they go into a rage. And yeah. you're like, you're doing too much. I had a woman tell me she got a facial. I didn't know what a facial was, to be honest. I didn't realize that it's like actually painful. That in they yeah, 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 yeah. she told me that the person's like, Your face is gonna feel a little spicy. And I was like, This can't be good for you. Yeah. You're doing too much. Yes. Do less. Well, they're in a women are in an arms race. Mm. about beauty products, where to moisturize, how often to moisturize, uh, uh, hydration. And they, they just, once they hear that they need to hydrate to have good skin, they're like, they're, it's like a jinx. They can't not do it. Right. Once and- they hear a beauty tip, they can't not do it. It's like what they did with beds. <laughs> what did they do with beds? There's an arms race where it's like, it used to be like a blanket, then it became a duvet, then it became a duvet cover, right. then it became a bed skirt, multiple pillows, yeah. throw pillows. This because, pill- it, because it would be it would be embarrassing if someone yeah, shows up. Yeah, if someone up, showed up, it's don't like, have anything? are you terminally ill? Right. What is wrong with you? Like, oh. <laughs> JTrain Podcast at gmail.com, JTrain Podcast at gmail.com, here with Neil Brennan. Blocks, that's the special. It's on Netflix Luxury Lounge. Please help me not get help. Jared Shelby, an esteemed guest. Feather, feather. I'm a professional harpist. Wow. Which involves me moving a pretty large instrument, about five foot eight inches, 80 pounds, for my gigs. That would be reason enough for me to not become a harpist. That's how lazy I am. Oh, I I know somebody who's a harpist. Yeah, I know. You do? Yeah, I do. And I I don't know her well, but I had to help her carry. A friend of mine had a a birthday party in her year. This is some LA shit for you. (laughs) LA. There was Friday, a har- if Fri- I went to a birthday party and there was a harvest, I would go, okay, I can talk about the Four Seasons here. Friday, <laughs> daytime birthday party, like 3 p.m., yard, outdoors in Malibu. And she had a, she's a musician, so she had one of her, she goes, I'm going to have my friend Mary come play harp. And I go, and I go, Mary Lattimore? And she's like, how do you know who Mary Lattimore <laughs> is? This li- woman, Mary Lattimore got on my youtube music algorithm i'm now like a huge fan of a woman who plays harp how do you become mary a harp Lattimore. Fan? i assumed she was super old right mary Lattimore sounds like she's from the 1800s right she's from philly who plays the harp she plays harp <laughs> that, so, <laughs> from yeah. philly yeah she's from philly um and, is that uh, uh, okay go mary, look her music up mary okay. Lattimore is fucking amazing so it's like it's not just harp it's harp with like 
synth and a bunch of other stuff. Okay. It's just great music. Famous person, birthday party, or rich no, parents? Like she, no, she's a, she's a uh, composer for and does scores for movies, so she hires musicians a lot. Okay. So she, I don't know if it was like a favor, but it would be like Wait, if you had a, if you three, had somebody come and do stand-up. But 3 p.m. on a Friday. Well, it's L.A., so half the people are like, where they work, you know. Especially now, I think people's schedules are they insane. You can do that. Yeah. Well, this harpist, I take it out of my apartment, in and out of the car, sometimes up and down a few stairs. I've been doing this for seven plus years, have my system down and know the safest way to move this very expensive and delicate instrument. I'll also add for context that I'm a 28-year-old female, 5'5". Five, five. I'm pretty fit and fully capable of moving my equipment. My complaint is that without fail, some dude will come up to me and try to help me move my harp. Often without even this asking. This woman will know who Mary Lattimore is. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Often without even asking if they can touch it, they will just grab and try to lift it in a way that could cause damage. This is insane to me. What other time would you just go up to someone and take their shit right out of their hands without asking? Even if they do bother to ask and I say no thank you, they repeatedly insist as if there's no possible way I could do it on my own. I've heard you give great one-liners on ways to deter pe annoying people. Do you have anything that could help me here? Here. thank you not a helpless harpist what do you think look what? i love helpless harpists if it's nothing great. else happens this is a that's a victory it's, a, it's, it's a, just a, coming up with helpless harpists i mean this is a, a wonderful email it's a great problem to have it's a it's it a, is a pretty specific problem right. but i bet you know what this reminds me of handicapped people okay in that when i i saw a handicapped guy getting out of his car the other day and my instinct was to help him okay and then i was like i don't Handicapped people have fully developed personalities like I do. I don't want people touching me. No. And like, let me, I don't like, you ever have a girlfriend try to, pick, you're probably bigger, but have a girlfriend try to pick you up? I, they haven't attempted that. I've had girls like, really? we'll be hugging and then they'll try to pick me up and I'll go, don't do that. Right. Because if a girl picks you up, she'll. You're she's not gonna fuck you for three weeks. <laughs> so you gotta I was like, don't. But also In what world are they trying to pick you up? They're it's just, just we're hugging. I have, I weigh 150 pounds. Yeah, so it's like they just want to see if they can do it. Yeah, it's just like whatever, right. I'm there. We're I give hard hugs. Oh, you gotta <laughs> see what I do. Um so it's similar to handing it where I they don't want help. They have a, like they don't want to be touched. It's like right. they, it's like, no, I have a system. Well, and the, it's a one-person system, and I don't need a second person coming and grabbing it. Uh, yeah, they've gotten out of the car before. They Correct. don't, you know, this isn't their first car Correct. experience. It's, and the same goes, for, you know, the difference with handicap, I guess, would be that someone could see her with the harp and go, "This is her first time with the harp." But that's an insane thought to have. Like, I did have the thought that when kids in like there's certain instruments in high school that kids play that they it's they're lugging and they get beat up whatever like they're right. kind of get bullied i almost think that it's a good bullying because it'll teach like why are you playing tuba <laughs> why are you playing what? an instrument that you have to lug around no in a way that's i almost feel like with harpists it's like the people that make it are just the people who stick with the fucking drudgery of playing the harp of I, carrying the harp from place to place well the tuba you don't want to be a confident tuba player you have to know you're doing a weird thing that like kind of gives you grit like your parents are hugging you too much if you're going if of course i play the tuba it's, you think it's privilege if you think it's like oh this is what i like you have to know yeah it's part of that bullying is getting insight into i'm doing something this special. is a stupid abnormal thing i'm doing stupid or special you know different Yes. Like it's it's nice to be different, but you don't know it's if you don't know it's different, you kind of look like I, a crazy I person. I mean, look, we need we need stability. I don't want too much too many <laughs> no, differences. No, I no. <laughs> there are norms for a reason. Right. Be normal. It, it, of course, it, my entire special is about not being normal. But whatever. Okay. Don't worry about that. Um. Yeah. So. Well, here's what 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 can she do? Because here's the thing. Uh, I was on a flight yesterday. Yeah. Uh. Two on Friday, I'm on a flight to Boston. This guy is sitting behind me. The war, the flight attendant. Goes and is trying to make. The You're talking over about the Four Seasons. I, I'm then, like, yeah. I'm in the front, being Nothing like, I like cannot, first class. Am like, I right? <laughs> right. She's trying to readjust the overhead, and so she sees a spot where someone could put their bag, and she goes, "Oh, I'll move this bag over to this side." She's doing the right thing. She picks up the bag. The guy behind me goes, "Please do not touch that." Uh huh. And, and freaks out. Everyone on the flight, we're all boarding, takes out of your phones. 
Yep. Now we all want to watch the. It's on. It's on. You're getting ready to record. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone yeah. was like in the old west. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Because we were all just like, oh, yeah. here we go. We're gonna get one. Yeah, yeah. Were you excited? <laughs> <laughs> right. You hear about them, but you never see one yourself. Yeah. Right. So, the, and then I thought about it, and I was like, I don't know what's in his bag. You know, like uh, the, this guy really had a reaction, and then he said he didn't want it moved. So the woman goes, "I look, I don't. There's something about it. I get hit what he's saying. I get what she's doing, and I get what he right. He what reacted she's doing. Like, badly. She she's trying to be economical about space, right? And he's like, "Yo, don't be touching my shit." Right. I get it. Right. And it's like you almost like what she's trying to avoid is being that person because he looks bad to everybody the way, but, but I agree with you. Don't touch my stuff. Yeah. But you go, please don't, you know, when he freaks out and right. she's saying, but even don't touch my stuff. If you don't know the person, it's very hard to do that in a smooth way. Right. Exactly. That's what her problem is because these guys who are kind of hitting on her, Mary Lattimore, the great Mary Lattimore yeah. was very like looking for help. She wasn't looking, and this but she is, didn't. She was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Did, if you have, because I had to drag it through like stones and fucking to grass. get it into the party, yeah, to get into the yard. So did she come into the house and go, "Can anyone help me with my harp?" Nah, she showed up. She texted. It was like it was, it was like coordinated. But she also travels, Mary Latimer, the great Mary Latimer, mm. <laughs> probably 150 dates a year. So she's lugging this thing around just yeah. like this person. Yes. Yeah. I think the line is, "I'm a lesbian." You know, like I don't need your. You know, I don't know. Like I don't that, know because they are hitting on her. I think that's, that's part of it. Is men trying to like act like tough guys and show off to her uh, and have a chance to talk to her? You could say like this lowers my odds of me fucking you. <laughs> you say that right away. Yeah. Yeah. Lowers your odds. This Go is, ahead, do what you want. Right. I'm gonna be less in uh, 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 i'm not gonna fuck it yeah this, this isn't helping. do whatever you want yeah you're not this ain't but i get it's i guess the instinct isn't bad i'm sure women are sick of feeling uh fragile but at the same time they they need help getting shit out of high places and and unscrewing like well, just dumb shit that's like so hacky like they can't open cans, shit like that. Right, and but I I think this person is saying, you know, the the idea of coming right up to you and just grabbing it is crazy. Well, that's insane. But that's I think they feel like it's short lived. I'm betting. Mm. Um, yeah, it's like I'm betting that they that they they think uh, they're doing her a favor. Right. What so if she it's just like it's screaming? not a bad instinct. Well, no, she she could scream. Like if someone came right up to me and started, to, I would scream. Of course, but it, but then then who are you? I'm the screaming guy. You're the screaming I'm the guy harpist. in the seat. Yeah. I'm the guy in the, the, yeah. the, that everyone takes out yeah. the headphone for. It's, she's in a she's in a very bad situation. Horrible. And if she can get through this, she's gonna be Mary Lattimore. J Train Podcast at gmail dot com. J Train Podcast J-train. at gmail dot com. That's right. <laughs> Here with Neil Brennan. I, I we're sponsor people. I love the sponsor. It is something I am. Just, I love the service. Framebridge. Framebridge makes it easier than ever to custom frame everything that matters without ever leaving the house. Here's what Framebridge does takes a gift that's okay and makes it like really a nice gift. Just one of these things where you send them a, a, a picture and they'll yeah. frame it for you. Yep. So you can take something that's on your phone that like means nothing to you and make it like a really cool, thoughtful gift. I think I've that's done great. this several times. The reaction to the gift is way bigger than the effort you're putting in which is kind of the gift you want to give uh it's it's an outsized you get more credit than you deserve particularly right. because framebridge is doing all the work you're giving them money don't right. get us wrong but you're going to give them an offer code and it's this is going to be lower. we give them free money which means you can easily give a thoughtful gift this holiday season i've been lucky enough to have a ton of incredible experiences with the people i love this past year and i'd like to give them something special to each of them i'm a little behind on my holiday orders but they're really speaking for me here framebridge makes it possible to frame a photo that not only ships out the very next day but also comes in a beautiful gift box that's the thing they are doing all the work. They're going to make you look great. 
and easy peasy cross people off your list right away just go to framebridge.com upload your photo or they'll send you packaging to safely mail any physical pieces preview your item online and dozens of frame styles and gallery wall layouts your finished piece comes ready to hang prices start at just $39 and all shipping is free order online at framebridge.com or stop by a framebridge store near you to work with a designer in person get started today give the perfect this is the perfect gift go to framebridge.com place your a order text, today I've framed a few texts you have yeah love that it's because they're like f either funny or touching or but what a way to make it thoughtful but i they're from uh, they're things i want to remember that's cool yeah i like that check out frame bridges holiday gift shop for frames that ship out the very next day at, in a beautiful in a beautiful gift box so framebridge.com go ahead uh we're here with neil brennan go follow at neil brennan on instagram blocks that's the special Luxury Lounge, funny friend introduction. I mean, we're gonna like go. this one. Yeah, Jared, love the pod. Everything you do, feather feather. Now to my complaint. Recently, I was at a bar in my hometown where I ran into a girl I went to high school with, who I am friendly with, but not necessarily friends with. She proceeds to introduce me to her friends and then follow up with, "You'll love her. She's so funny." I am then left standing there like a moron and feel like I now have to put on a show like fucking Bozo the Clown. This scenario happens to me frequently and it's usually people I am not even friends with that introduce me this way so I don't know where they get the idea that I'm funny in the first place. Like why can't people just introduce me and let me be funny on my own rather than feel like a circus act? Anyways, thanks for having a space to complain about stupid scenarios like this and socially unaware people. Totally agree. We get this. We get, well, you know what we have, the intro. Well, when you brought had on, brought the, on stage, yes, intro. One time, somebody brought me on. Al Madrigal brought me on one of my first spots at the comedy store. Okay, I'm not even past. Okay, and I think he said this guy's the one of the <coughs> funniest comedians I've ever seen. <laughs> and I to say I ate shit, right, would be an understatement. We get this every night. Chappelle has a very funny uh, term for it, which is the eulogy. <laughs> The eulogy. Yeah, when they give you the eulogy of like, then he, then you all know him. Oh the, my God. But now what's worse is I get this more lately. Needs no introduction. Oh, no. Humor me. Right. Humor I need, them. I, I, we, Don't assume anything. Especially with the world we live in now where yes, like entertainment is siloed. Di yes. Everyone has their own feed that yep. they get. They're not Correct. getting Neil Brennan nope. every day. They're not getting Jared Free. They're not yep. getting... I had this happen the other night. They go, this guy, a legend. Oh, my God. You all already know him. Yeah. You all already know him. You're done. Because then the people that don't know you are super like, wow. Oh. Even the, saying anything po overly positive right. makes it this. It's already this. It's already. They show it. up like this. Right, right. That's and, the, the trick is like they go like. Yeah, I like comedy, but not this comedy, probably. Right, probably. <laughs> Even though every time I've come here, it's been great. Right. And uh, it's, it's funny because what they're saying is like, this does happen in social situations. Like, we have yeah. this every night. We have to worry but about I, it. But this happens... This this would happen in high school and co whatever. Like, Absolutely. And you're like... This guy's the funniest. And yeah. you're like, fuck. And you want to go like, er -ee, er -ee. Right. you come in with like a fucking, <laughs> with a, with a, like a flower spray right. in people's face. Like, hey, ah, right. hey, ah. I mean, you know, my friend, <laughs> like you got to do Don Rickles. I, um, I mean, it happens so many times. I, I, I used to host all the time at the cellar. Yeah. And I would, I when I brought every time I bring someone on stage, all I cared about was cadence more than what I said, because the audience they're there, the, and, and what yeah, I, they, it's all a blur to them, right? They're, they're, maybe they'll hear one thing. They so can't go, remember people's names. They can't remember. It doesn't matter as long as yeah. the cadence is good. Because if you go, and uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, yeah, they'll follow you and yeah. clap when they're supposed yep. to. And if they don't, then the comedian is actually going to get a break because they're going to be able to make fun of the Look, fact that if no one you're clapped. here to shit on Will Sylvans. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm not. I am in no way the worst intro. <laughs> consistently <laughs> you don't even know what he's saying you don't know what language he's speaking half the time and we then, see so many da, 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 da. but the audience doesn't care right they don't care get them on whatever yeah. it is and so when you get so in the same they can't follow even his cadence is what i'm saying <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> sometimes i've i've had people they go i what i hate when i get brought on stage is uh, okay come on 
clap yeah. everybody you're like just do the cadence they yeah. will follow it they will clap and if they don't that's okay too i there's a third version of this when you headline as i'm sure you know mm. the first comic goes out and goes you guys here excited to see jared freed <laughs> and then they're like yeah and then sometimes we go I can't. Jared's can hear you. Right. Really make him feel the love. And then by this point, they're like, "Fuck this guy." Yeah, yeah. Does he need that? Yeah. Does, like, is this that guy how is, Yeah. Is this guy sounds like a fucking is? real asshole, real <laughs> right. needy, needy asshole. Right. This emotionally stunted yeah. person needs yeah. me to clap from the yeah. back. Yeah. It's, He's like uh, watching from like the eye in the sky, like the fucking binoculars. Like the, I didn't like the the ooh. decibel. Level. He might not come out here. Yeah. I did a corporate gig. I got flown out to do a to Big Sky, Montana, to do a show for 11 uh, urologists. But the show was me presenting. I talk about it on my Patreon. I've told this story, patreon.com slash Jared Freed, if you want to sign up. It's when I went to Big Sky. I told this whole story. But it's a long story short. I get brought in to present this company's business to the urologists. And I was like, I don't know your business at all. Like We had like a one hour go. You know, I went through these slides. I couldn't yeah. even pronounce the things on the slides. So I'm like trying to figure out how I'm going to do this without having to do, make this as easy as possible on myself. So my plan was I'll have the president of the company, we'll do like an infomercial. They're the expert, I'm you know the host. They're Ron Popeil, said it and forget yeah. it. I'm, so You're what going, do you do with what? this? Yeah. Right, so I present that idea, but before, when I got there, they're like, the company that hired me, like they're like, here's Jared, the comedian. They start introducing me to everyone. And I'm like, fuck, they're all looking at me like, why'd we hire this guy? Like yeah. I was I was one person's idea and yeah. it worked out, but like, and then we went fly fishing before the show. So on the fly fishing trip, I, just like this person, I'm like, I gotta like do some jokes here. Yeah. Like I gotta show these people. Well, that's that they, why when people ever say on a plane, what do you do for work? I never say comedian. We have another one. We uh, actually, I know, cause it's like. You can't say comedian. No. You can't. Um, because but hold on. now having said that when someone says someone hit me a couple weeks ago with uh they go something and i go yeah i'm a comedian they go really you don't seem funny and i was like you're now my enemy for life <laughs> i hate you well Sir, hold on you are now you are you did it yeah right. that's the fucking magic words well it's, you did it it's also like considered a gift now i know i don't have to deal with you yeah, like I, oh. when I when someone says that, I go good. Okay, Fantastic. get out of my life. This person writes luxury lounge. Should I just tell people I'm an accountant? Hi, Jared. I've worked with nonprofits my entire career. I currently work partially remote, remotely, partially remotely for a rural hospital in sub-Saharan Africa, and I previously lived full time in the Caribbean working for a child health nonprofit. I like meeting new people, but when I'm when I'm inevitably asked what did I do, typically I get some version of response saying you're a great person. Mm -hmm. Or how their job doesn't help anyone. <laughs> or worse, they assume I'm a missionary. It puts me in a position of feeling like I have to explain that I'm actually a piece of shit like everyone else. Kidding. I do care about certain social issues for a variety Kidding. of reasons. Uh, but, no. <laughs> but it's not purely altruistic. I'm a professional who likes solving certain problems with self-focused career goals. And I have perks like getting paid tr to travel. On the bright side, I appreciate the opportunity to tell people about great organizations and what they should look for when deciding to donate or volunteer. So we totally understand this complaint. Uh, we don't get positive assumptions. Well, right. we get positive assumptions. We get like positive, but it's it all seems. What I say, uh, the part of the reason I don't like saying I'm a comedian is because I don't want to seem like uh, sweaty and like needy. As <laughs> what, a part, why like, is that? Hey, I'm a comedian. <laughs> like the reputation <laughs> of comedians is right. like. Uh, needy as hell, mm. uh, n like bad in relationships, like neurotic. It's funny to me. That's a very to me that shows you live in L.A. Like in L.A., I would. That's the assumption. People know more about comedians than here. Like yeah, I, but like I think I, if you told a woman, if your girlfriend told her family she was dating a comedian, they'd all be like. I, I think, think people know. Don't you think the what they know is like Cosby, mm, they like the they know Me things. Too stuff, yeah, yeah, and like Robin, and then like suicide right. drugs. You're, they're depressed. Yeah, like so they know none of it's like he's great and hilarious. Right, right, right. It's never I, great, hilarious, and 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 uh, and and even keeled. And and doing mentally okay. Yeah, I had yeah. A, an aunt at Thanksgiving once say, "Aren't they all depressed?" 
Yeah. And I, what is, what's your problem? And Somebody like, said that to me, like, would you're all depressed? And I was like, yeah. They thought I'd be insulted. I was like, yeah. Sure. Of course you're all depressed. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, I think the Northeast reaction, though, when you say you're a comedian, sometimes I, I, I feel it more here of like, well, it's almost an insult to them. You're saying I'm funnier than you. No, Which, uh, but that's what I'm saying. None of it's positive. It's all it's bad. It's a challenge. Right. Oh, so you think you're funnier than me? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I moved for it. <laughs> Professional. I made all my money last year from yapping. <laughs> so, yes, I think I'm funnier than yeah. you. Um, every. By the way, it's not like uh, the. Uh, I'll take you to the cellar. You can try. Right. We'll we'll get you on there. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you on. See, I I wish you the best of luck. Right. I'm Al Madrigal is going to bring you up. Um, <laughs> and uh, and like it's so so your it's all negative. It's like. Right. You're you're either rapey or you're depressed, uh, depressed, or you're or challenging you're, the person, or you're needy, mm -hmm. or you're superior, mm -hmm. or you think you're, or you do drugs. It's never like great. And I always go with it. So you think you're funny? No, I always say no. I I, I just I fold like a box. Like right. I, I, I that's the only strategy out for them, for me. To this woman who's in nonprofit, if I'm her. Oh, you're, you must be a good person. I'm the best person you've ever met. Like, I would go with that. Right. I'd just be like, I, I guess that's my way out of it is to go, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm it a is, saint that's a on weird, earth. That's a weird, I get it. A problem's a problem. Right. It's a unique one. Because I know, Very. but yeah, anyone that's like experienced knows, like a friend of mine works as a, is a, a uh, does like, Sir, uh, public what's the fuck public not public service she's like a for like uh orphans and stuff in la okay um she works at foster care yeah more or less okay and um and uh she but she's like i'm trying to get overtime she's like it's she's like to, a job they're right. all just jobs right there's a point well same with comedy there's a point where you go from this what you think of it and then you're like this is a job there's yeah. there's, there's moments where you go yeah, I, I, I got to go to work too. You know, yeah, I, I have I gotta, work to do. Right, I'm trying I to get my career off the ground in nonprofit. Yes. Yes. The the goodness of this is yeah. not my first thought anymore. Yeah. Yes. J Train Podcast at gmail.com here with Neil Brennan Blocks. That's the special. It's out right now. Go watch. Make it a date night Sunday on the couch. One bathroom house. Recently moved uh -huh. to a new place. Right. This ain't the Four Seasons. Great neighborhood, the basketball court slash park and grocery store are all within two minute bike ride of each other. The house is great with a big front porch and little front yard, a gas stove. I have a much bigger room and an awesome shower with a big shower head. Everything about this place is rad. And compared to where I moved from, it is a huge step up. I had a leaky ceiling and house fly infestation. My complaint, though, is that the new place is a three bedroom, one bath house. So I share a bathroom with two others. This isn't a big deal for the most part, except I no longer have a place to poop in peace. I feel like I can't spend five to ten minutes doing my business, phone browsing, without the thought of I can't let my roomies know I'm taking a poop. At least with my old place, there was a downstairs bathroom that I could use in the mornings, but at this new place, I'm pretty self-conscious about pooping whenever. Why can't there be a separate private poop-only bathroom in the house? I just want my peaceful poops back. What do you think? Uh, I think that that is one of the unheralded problems of living with people. Is it's a thing no one wants to talk about, but it's a, it's problems with family, mm -hmm. any close quarter living. Right. It's a huge. Vac you go on a vacation with your girlfriend. Tough. You gotta have a system down. I'm gonna go to the lobby. Wink. Right. <laughs> Um, you do whatever you need to do in this room. Wink, wink, wink. There's nothing I love more than like a long shit. I don't like talking about this, but I will agree with you. You don't like talking about this? No. Not for you? I d yeah, not for me. Was your family magazines in the bathroom family? You come from we a had big some magazines, family. Yeah. Magazine. I'm one of 10 kids. 10 there kids, how many boys? I feel like this is Six a male boys. thing. Six I boys. loved magazine well the i i don't know if girls have done this show we like where guys will guys will like we're a, a part of being feminine is like you don't use the you don't do number two right and i've had girlfriends they can't believe how long i spend in there yeah, yeah. and i'm like i'm just 
I'm like on vacation. It's free that. time. It's truly the only free time a man has. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, and I and I say to myself, I do have moments where I go, I can't believe how long I'm in here either. No, it's and a how long much time. I enjoy it. Yeah. It's we'll light out when you topic, go in and it's think, dark. Well, no, 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 I don't, I, I don't, no, I'm not like, hey, you're ruining my day. I'm just saying like. <laughs> the music, we'll there's put on a the way song, to, we'll ruin the Fuck. <laughs> Let's talk about shitting. Um, please. Uh, I'm just not a fan. I'm just not a fan of it. I can't explain it. It just feels like hacky uh, sure. and like sort of, eh. Right. The whole thing. Any bathroom talk. Sandler had a great shitting joke though. What was Sand- his? On his it? last. Excellent. His last special was great. Fucking excellent. And one of the texts that I framed was from him. Really? About blocks. That's really on nice. On Netflix. An incredibly sweet text. And he was like, I watched it, loved it. You can't even get into it. It's so great. It's so, it also like, is so... He's such a good dude, and he's been a great dude. Knowing... It's got to... When you talk to Adam Sandler, do mm-hmm. you have a moment where you're like, what the fuck am I doing talking to Adam Sandler? Do you ever have that thought? Yes, and like yes, he we the I wrote that movie Half Baked with Dave. It mm-hmm. was the same producer as Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison, so Adam was around, okay, a little bit. So I met him back then, and so he you was have like, a long relationship re- with him. A, a long awareness. I'll say a long awareness, yeah. not a, not a relationship. Now we like he really liked Three Mics, and I've seen him. We've done shows together, and like we were we're like we're we have like a relationship like where he watched the special a friend we have a mutual friend joe vesey you know yeah who um sent, watched the special and he was like can i show it to adam over really like so and he did and adam texted so now and that's funny because adam sandler famously a poop joke guy like really? every every movie has oh, something yeah uh not like shit. Nothing shit. Not like brown stain things. Sure. I mean, not too like, graphic. Maybe like a whoa, don't go in there. But, but like, like the, 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 you know, the kids movie aspect of what he's, you know, there's a lot of that in it. Fine. Yeah. The, here, D- Vessi and him wrote a joke about when you, he's like, you ever, you know, when you're wiping your ass and you go like, whatever happens, this has got to be the last wipe. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's yeah. such a yeah, yeah. fucking funny observation because right. it's not. Even, it, I don't even think it's like it's just like about a dumb thing our brains right. do. Like, no, I'm not. I'm done. I am not doing this anymore with <laughs> right, you, right. dirty asshole. Um, so I, I, my heart does go out to this guy because I, I have a bidet. By the way, you do. You can get it. It's it. No, no listen. A, they've sponsored the show. Washlet. Yeah, we, we but they're done. not expensive. They have ones that are not expensive. They've that are like eighty the bucks. Yeah. yeah so is. I highly, highly, highly cannot say enough good things about bidets. I'm with you. J Train Podcast. And when you stay at luxury hotels in Asia, they got them in the room. There's a restaurant around the corner that has one, and anytime I go there, I use the bathroom. And you don't even like the food. You just uh, yeah, go I'm for just the going bathroom. for the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you doing yeah. here? Uh, I'll I got take, my like, magazine. You got like a large fries. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just put them out. Everyone can have them. Yeah. I'm going to the bathroom. Airbnb outrageous cleaning requirements. Do you ever stay in Airbnbs? Uh, yeah. You do? Yeah. Not not on the road, which is the thing, is the thing people do. I, um, I can't believe anyone would do it on the road. I get not wanting to be watched by a hotel. I get, I get like the premise. Um, watched? If you want to just not have, if you want to not feel like what eyeballs on you or whatever, like, like, uh, hello, Mr. Like doorman. And like, right. what do you do? Like, just whatever. That's you why I like a hotel. or whatever. I'm with you. But yeah. I think I, that may be part of the reason that guys like. See, because I, I always just feel I've anytime I've stayed at an Airbnb, I'm like, I should have done a hotel. Like I, I, I've never stayed at one and been like, this was the right decision. Yeah, I I hear you. You know, like yeah, I, I, no, I'm with you. Like I'm like, like I, I am left short I, of what I needed. It always feels like a rental, like a short term rental. Right. That, you're right. My complaint today is about how Airbnb hosts are having increasingly absurd requests for guests upon leaving. I was recently leaving our Cape Cod Airbnb when my girlfriend proceeded to read me the list of cleaning requirements for departing. The I've idea, heard about this, and I would just go, go fuck yourself. Right. Are you going to find me? Are you going to try? I paid you. Get a cleaning lady. Right. That's the whole premise. It's not of this fucking thing. jet blue. <laughs> right. Also, 
you're going to clean this. Yes. Like the, the 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 idea that we leave and we clean and then a new people move. Yeah, that's yeah. not what's going no, on exactly. here. Well, you hope it better you not know, be. Well, uh, this list included gathering all linens and sheets and towels and placing them in a hamper. Not that big a deal to me. Cleaning all the dishes. Not uh, that, I'm uh, not doing that. I'm, I'm not, not doing either of those. None of those? Okay. Putting them away. Wiping down the counters and no, surface. Not doing no, that. No, no thanks. Organizing the couch. I know a couch, service you can call, though. They'll do it. <laughs> folding all blankets. Folding nope. blankets is crazy. Nope. And taking out the trash to the dumpster that was 500 uh, feet away. Uh, no. None of this would bother me that much if I didn't already pay a $150 cleaning fee. Yeah, what, what exactly am I paying for if I'm doing all the work? It's like, what's next? Do I need to mow the lawn? Are, people will do the wrong thing in almost every situation so they it's one of these things where somebody saw that one person did it mm. and they're like well, we could do that we can fuck over someone you know we could and it's like you know if we all stop fucking each other right it's better well here's what here's what it is and i own an apartment in harlem i have a tenant in the apartment my dad said to me i was like i'm gonna get a tenant because i was moving in with my girlfriend i was like I, my dad goes to me you do not want to do this he goes, you don't know, you're going to have, he, he, before the tenant moved in, he goes, you're going to have to deal with this and that. He goes, you're not a landlord. I, yeah. He goes, I know you, you are in over, I've had a wonderful experience with the person living in my apartment. Don't get, so I, I feel lucky. Yeah. I would do any, if they, if they ask me for a favor, I, like at this point, I am so thankful yeah. to if how you have a good, good tenant, of a tenant. It's, like a, it's, a, it's great. But I do know my dad is right about me. This yeah, doesn't work not, to my like, strengths. Yeah. And most comedians are not good landlord types. You know, we're late. You know, the, the way we were operate. Meaning like being diligent and doing things and fix it up and all that <laughs> right. stuff. I wouldn't. I would hire a property manager. This is exactly. So I, I, I think Airbnb offered an opportunity to be this landlord of types to people who didn't understand like don't aren't shouldn't be I don't doing think this. that's the cleaning fee problem. This is just people fucking trying to people. fuck people. It's just it's you're just becoming ticket master. <laughs> you're just going, "Oh, I'll be ticket. It's my I'll get to be the- ticket master." Fantastic. Right. Fees, 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 Processing fees. Processing fee, handling fee. The amount on fee. fees I'm paying in a hotel room in New York is fucking insane. Right. It's insane. The tax. It's like I think it's between twenty and twenty five percent more than what the like the cli- the, the, yeah. li- the listing yeah. prices. Yeah. Well, that's why you take the expensive airline. Like, this is. I mean, to me, this is why you don't go Airbnb. Though I, I understand, like, the hotel has fees, but like, I, I at least I see them on the page. Like, yeah. I see them coming. Yeah. And, well, I don't know where they spring these on people, but. But I there's I I try to keep my ticket prices reasonable on the road because I'm like I don't want to fuck people that right. like me right 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 and, and if they're lower than probably they could be and I'm just like I don't know I don't want to I I'm doing good right. I don't want to fuck people it just seems like why make this a bittersweet experience well, for you, you know, when it could just be a sweet experience where you pay like a reasonable amount of money and you get a great show well I've actually said this a lot recently is like. You know, the 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 biggest I think the biggest problem we have with like office culture is the boss doesn't show up anymore. Mm -hmm. You used to have to walk. Your boss had to walk by the employees. Yep. Those businesses would be good to the employees because you got to walk by the employees. You have to go to the show and see these people's faces. I have to go to the show. We have to see them. If you're charging 50 bucks a ticket and you're not proud of the work you're doing, you're going to watch them be upset with it's the, also the i just even if they're not upset i don't want to ring people out of course not but i'm saying these airbnb hosts it's all done through the app yeah for sure they, they, they don't yeah. shake your hand on the way and no. here are the keys yeah. enjoy the boat yeah. they don't do that so well, they yeah, don't mind it fucking feels over like these contemptuous people. like this dumb cocksucker i'm gonna run it right it's like okay we don't all have it just does it's the another. It's called the partition effect, where what you're talking about. Where is that like, what it's called? Yeah, where you'll just where people are so nasty, right? Because there's a partition, they'd never say it to your face, which is like, yeah, that's what's great about the internet. <laughs> so we say shit up to you that we'd never <laughs> right. say to your face, right? But at the same time, it's the super negative. J Train Podcast. J Train Podcast. J Train Podcast. Here with Neil Brennan. Do we have time for one more? You got time for one more? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, I'll give you the the choice. We kind of did. Okay. 
Luxury Lounge. This is our last one. Great. Very specific. Great. And I like it. Spontaneous finger guns. Okay. Jared, your previous complaint about unnecessary comments on your Bears t-shirt unlocked some anxiety-inducing memories. What was the comment that you don't like wearing? I don't like wearing logo stuff because people want to talk about it. They want to talk about it. Yeah. And they can't get over it. I think this is what this person... I graduated from Texas Tech, and the amount of tech gear that I own is honestly ridiculous. I've been to Texas Tech. Fun Which one is that? It's in Texas, obviously, but it's... um, it's like an hour from Houston, I think. It's okay. But big school, the Aggies. Big football school. Got it. Johnny Football. Got it. He was the guy. You, Great. They, and now they got Jimbo Fisher as the coach. And he's, is he the coach still? Jimbo Fisher. He's one of the highest paid college football. Great. A huge football Great. school. Uh, my complaint is about random people's reaction to the gear. Our hand signal and frequently used phrase is guns up. I now live in a part of Texas where there are not many tech fans, so if other people spot a t-shirt or emblem on a car, they feel the need to bond over this. And for many, uh, their way of doing this is just by doing the finger gun signal in your general direction. Yep. No words, just a finger gun. So they're looking at you. It's a kind of an aggressive... Um, I have had so many occasions where I do not even realize I have something tech on. It was just a t-shirt I grabbed. And all if of a sudden... If it were pirates, they'd go... <laughs> just fucking cut your neck <laughs> right um i i have something tech on i it was a t-shirt i grabbed and all of a sudden i have someone pointing finger guns at me grocery store stopped at a stoplight taking my kids to the park Sp- spontaneous silent finger guns this is scary yeah i would rather you make no comment in regards to my haphazard t- choice in t-shirt but if you insist on having this bonding moment at least say something with the guns so that i don't have a brief panic attack trying to figure out why you were silently signaling a gun thanks for giving me a space to air the grievance sincerely might need to refresh my t-shirt collection it, this is horrifying. Uh, this is I have a problem because I'm a white supremacist. Oh. So when people do this, <laughs> everywhere I go, people give me the oh, this the, sign. The, yeah, the, 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 the is that the, the is that I the, think some, that's one of them. This one. The and it, it's the okay the with okay. like the spread fingers. I remember I'm a proud boy. That's, that's so you. <laughs> when people do this, I'm everywhere I go, they're like, bro. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, so I get it. You get um that I find it you should it's kind of your fault for having pride in a college in the first place so you're saying get rid of the t-shirts it's yeah done. you started it right by wearing incessant gear from a place that charged you for books <laughs> The the idea of a loyalty to college is so dumb to me you you didn't go to college i went to nyu for a year for a year yeah and no nyu pride no at all no, why it's like i just i don't know i i do i went to penn state i liked i had a great experience at penn state mm-hmm. in no way am i what i don't get is this idea that people brag about schools that are just fine like haven't it's we just gotten to local, the point it's like i i'm from cleveland Y'all know how we do it. How do you do it? I don't right. know any of what you're talking about. <laughs> the fact that you are proud of you just happen to be born there. Right. What do you I told somebody one time, I'm not even loyal to Earth. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't if I were in space, it wouldn't be like Earth. Y'all know about Earth. <laughs> right. You know how we do it in Earth. It's, I don't give a shit. You don't care. No. no, it doesn't it's not indicative of me in any way. Right. I, there, there are there, things that are like if you said I'm a I'm a comic at the cellar. It's a different thing. The, also, we understand. What Even it if took. you said I went to the cellar, I it that confers something to me. When people tell me I, I love going to the cellar, I think I think highly, highly of them, them because yeah, you, they have good taste in comedy mm-hmm. and they had a choice in products and they made a in great informed choice. Right, and so I, the same with the comedy store in L.A. When right, someone goes right. to another club in L.A., I'm like. Are you out of your like? What, you're dumb. What were you doing? What yeah. happened? Yeah. What group on? Yes. Yeah, I. Some schools are worse about this than others, like, and I know that there's Penn State people that people are like, oh fuck Penn State. You right. Know, they, they get they get. I see this with Ohio State. Ohio State people. I All talk to them, them, but they, there's a version of that person at every school. Michigan. Michigan I literally go, go state by state. Iowa, Illinois. Right, they're all Mizzou. 
Alabama. It's you know literally, who, there's not no one. Do, no state doesn't have it. You know who doesn't have it, and they're the best. MIT. Well, of course, you've MIT. never well, you heard from someone from MIT. You can't really talk about. That's the four seasons of <laughs> right. education, <laughs> right? If we want to, you want to bring, bring it all this around. Full fucking right. Make this a real round episode of right. podcasting. You, you can't go out. To, you can't go to. There's nothing like MIT. Yeah, you can't say I. They can't. You have to say I went to school in Boston. You can't say I went to well, Harvard. Harvard. People say Cambridge. They always yeah. do that. Oh, a small school in Cambridge. Like, no, they say they, Boston. They say Boston. Yeah. Okay. Because Cambridge is a giveaway. That's if you say giveaway, Boston, yeah. you could be like, oh, BC. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Eagle super fan. Yeah. But I blame this person for buying too much gear. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Neil Brennan, thank you for coming what on. What a night. Beautiful. Wonderful. What thank you time. so much for coming flew on. Flew by. Everyone go follow Neil. What was this? Four hours? 17 this flew hours. by. Put on the music. No, I. Oh. <laughs> at neil brennan instagram blocks that's the special go check it out it's on netflix right now i'm jared freed we're here every thursday in the lounge keep sending your emails back next episode boom